Now, you might be familiar with the concept of a birth doula, someone who gives support before, during and after childbirth. Now, end-of-life doulas are helping people talk about and plan for their death. I've got a life-threatening disease, and it was, I've lost my mother, my father, my sister, and my dearly beloved husband seven years ago with this disease. And I realised that I was ill-informed. When 76-year-old Joyce O'Brien Green was diagnosed with lung cancer, she decided she wanted to have control over the way she died and what happens after she's gone. So she hired an end-of-life doula. When I first introduced the idea, I was greeted with, don't talk about this. This is macabre. They very softly had to explain to them, you know, I'm not afraid to die. Joyce's mum died without ever saying what she wanted after death or even making a will. And she wants things to be different for her two children and four grandsons. Those decisions I made were haphazard. When the priest came to see me, I was in grief, asking me about my mother, and I was saying things like, I don't really know. So I want my children to be able to grieve. I don't want them running around making lots and lots of decisions. I knew that it was going to make Mum feel better knowing that she had taken control of what she was doing with her end of life. Um, and realising that it was going to put a lot of ease on my brother and myself. Everyone's day is going to come. So, I mean, talking about it is getting it out of the open is uh, pretty cool. Joyce knows exactly what she wants. She's planning a funeral she wishes she could be alive for. It's going to be so fantastic that it would be quite nice to have it beforehand as we celebrate our birthdays. We celebrate the christenings of our lovely grandchildren and our children. But we should be celebrating that death too. Helen Callanan was the live-in carer for her mum while she was dying, and that experience inspired her to help others navigate death. Having a doula would have been amazing then. I did have family support and things, um, but a doula, someone outside the circle, is what really can make a profound difference. Sometimes I, I liken our role of an end-of-life doula to like an event planner tries to introduce people to different concepts, like the fact you don't need to be buried or cremated in a coffin and can be wrapped in a shroud. For some people, that's a very welcome cost saving. Natural burial is something that, that Australians have always been allowed to do. We just didn't know that we could do it. And we had a hilarious family here recently who said, oh, we'll spend that on beer. You know, it's like a <laughs> most simple thing. Why would I spend a thousand bucks on a coffin when I can buy a beer with it? It's great. Helen now teaches others how to become end-of-life doulas. When trained, they could charge $2,300 per death. And, you know, it's not just about death. It's about the end of life. I think that's the next big thing is helping people reclaim death and have it not be so scary. Opening up that conversation that it's okay to talk about death. You know, we're so open talking about our birth wishes, but no one speaks about them. It's just as an important event in our lives. Helen helped Ron Leanders through his wife Annie's two and a half year battle with lung and later brain cancer. Annie wanted to stay home and Helen helped with the practical side of that and the emotion. Annie had problems, I'd absorbed them and that was my job and not to lay my, my stuff on her. Um, I would turn around and lay my stuff on Helen. Helen made sure Annie's wishes were honoured, even when Ron found things extremely confronting. Annie was very clear that she didn't want any recovery, so one case it looked like she was choking. In the past, it was just a little gurgle, but man, that was a tough time of it. But Helen just stood her ground and just said, no, this is not her wish. Joyce wants others to open up to the discussion about death. I'm not in a state of crisis. I'm not in a state of wondering what's going to happen to my family when I go. I'm not in a state of grieving my own death. My end of time is going to be different. I am going to greet death graciously.